Children's Museum. And on behalf of Pastor Brian and Tina, we welcome you to Faith Life Mission next Sunday. Before we start service, let's take a look at the announcements. This Tuesday night, we'll continue with our live stream from either the land or Del Norte. Make sure you invite a guest to join us. If you're not connected yet, you can scan the QR code to submit the live stream located form or any of our leaders to get signed up. We'd love to have you and your family. Our event is looking for individuals that are passionate about design and decoration, like creating centerpieces and part events, or have the knowledge or the desire to help plan events. If this is you, please email events at faithlife.tv or see Rachel Vasquez for more information. In honor of our risen Savior Jesus, we are preparing an unforgettable Easter Sunday event just for you and it's 100% free. There we go. Experience a live theater performance filled with dance, song, and a message of hope that resonates with all ages. Children will be delighted with Easter baskets, and families can cherish the moment with complimentary Easter photos. Join us in celebrating the true essence of Easter. Don't forget to spread the word and invite your loved ones to share in this special occasion. That's it for the announcement. Now let's continue with worship and the word. We hope you enjoy. Good morning. Thanks, Mr. Beck. Good morning. Good morning, Faith Life. There's always someone that stands. We can stand to our feet. Are you excited to be in the house of the Lord this morning? I have to do like the old preachers. Let me ask that one more time. Are you excited to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Amen. Amen. We say it often, this is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. So God, we thank you. Let's pray for this service. God, we thank you for everything that's going to transpire in this service. We thank you that the word and the worship is coming forth unhindered and unchecked by any satanic and demonic force. And God, we thank you that even though we've already set the atmosphere in prayer, that we get to come before the throne once again saying thank you and walking out the finished work that is this service in Jesus' name. And so if this is your first time joining us, we've just prayed, but let me give you the protocol for the day. We had corporate prayer already before we went live. We've had our announcements. We are now having what we call presiding, where we greet you and we say good morning. We're gonna go straight into the worship. And then after the worship, we're gonna have a mighty time in the word of God. And then we're gonna get to sow, amen? Amen. And so this morning, as we prepare, as we prepare for worship, there's a scripture that we're going to sing out that talks about praising the Lord. And it reminds us that everything that has breath ought to praise the Lord. There's other scriptures that talk about not letting the rocks cry out in our place. We talk about we have been given the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. So before we even get started with worship this morning, why don't you put your hands together? Why don't you start praising Jesus? Why don't you start giving a hallelujah? Why don't you say thank you, Jesus? And let everything that has breath do what? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, keep it going this morning, church. Let's get our hands going. Let's sing it out. Let everything, let everything, what? That has breath. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let everything, let everything that has breath, that has breath. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord.
worship was heavy. The chains break at the weight of your glory. I needed shelter, I was an orphan, but you called me a citizen of heaven. When I was broken, you were my healing. Impossible never stops you. 
this morning, you need to get yourself a faith partner, and they're going to begin to pull you out of that pit. Why?
sense of filling in the room. I sense the Lord just breathing. Fresh air, fresh air. Blow, blow, blow. God wants you. you blow into those dead things? Would you blow into those things that we've been dealing with? Would you blow your life into those things that new life would come? That it wouldn't just be a moment in time. It would be a lifestyle of heaven. It would be a lifestyle of your presence. It would be a lifestyle of breathing in the air of heaven. Oh God, won't you do it here? Would you ask him? Would you ask him for yourself? If there's something in you that needs a refreshing. Oh God, would you blow your air? Heaven 
Hallelujah. Oh, come on, you can do better than that. Come on, clap your hands, all ye people. Come on, shout to the Lord with a voice of triumph. Hallelujah. Come on. Remember, one can chase a thousand, two can put ten thousand to flight. Come on, put those hands together in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, Jesus is worthy of it. Come on, somebody in here. Yes, 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 yes. We give you praise, Master. Hallelujah. Amen, 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 amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Good stuff, good stuff, good stuff. Praise the Lord. Somebody give the Lord Jesus a real big round of applause. A hand clap of praise. Amen, somebody in here. Glory to God. I am so excited about being in the house of the Lord again. Are you excited this morning? 
Amen. Somebody in here. Glory to God. Look to the sides of you real quick and just say, I'm so glad you made it. It wouldn't have been the same without you. Touch them, touch them, touch them. Yeah, look behind you. Look in front of you. Say, I'm so glad you made it. It wouldn't have been the same without you. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Somebody in here. Glory to God. We have a lot of good stuff on the agenda today, so make sure you prepare to take a lot of notes. How many came with outstretched neck and you're very, yeah, 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 you're very, very expected today. Amen, somebody, because you're going to need to be expecting for this. Amen. Is that all right, somebody? Glory to God. Just want to make sure I'm not missing anything before I leap into what I got to leap into. Angels of mercy, yeah, all right. Yeah, yeah, the two of you are here. Give them a hand clap. Glory to God. I've been inviting and they've been saying we're coming. So they actually came today. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen, somebody. Had a fun time uh, for those that are, how, ma how many are making it your business to, to win people to Jesus? You, you really, I'm telling you, this is a time to do that. And I don't know if they have the picture, but uh, I was just at, what, what was it? Uh, where's Ash and Robin? We were just at uh, Boston Coffee. Yeah. And uh, the Lord began to speak to me about the guy that was serving us. And so I just said, hey, man, um, you're a good guy. And he says, yes, I am. <laughs> Amen, somebody. And so I said, uh, man, you know, before, if you get some time, I just want to pray for you, man, because, you know, I mean, are you a Christian? He says, um, well, I, I, you know, I have this thing with God, and, you know, I, I believe I'm going to be fine and all of this. And I said, can we make sure you're going to be fine? Because how many know he gave Jesus so you could be fine? He gave us a free gift of the Lord Jesus Christ. Did they put him up here? Did, do y'all have that? Okay, I don't know if they got it, but uh, I just wanted you to see his smiling face. If, you, if they can't pull it up, that's all right. But, uh, you know, he was just, you know, handsome young man. And right there at my table while he was serving us eggs and, um, you know, all the other stuff, we led him to Jesus. Amen, somebody. And we're trying to get all of you just in this flow because I mean, they know in the times ahead, it's going to be like hotcakes. It's going to be real easy to lead somebody to the Lord. Amen, somebody. So I'm encouraging you in advance. Let him use you. Jesus didn't just say, I'm going to make you disciples, uh, but he also said, I'll make you fishers of men. Or, uh, how many know God's going to make us professional anglers? We're going to be really good at, at, at leading people to the Lord Jesus Christ. But again, it takes the love of God, and it takes your uh, willingness to get off of your blessed assurance and uh, make it happen. Because how many know someone had to do that for you? Amen, somebody. The reason that you are here now is somebody got, I just stepped out of their comfort zone, and they got the word to you, man. They, yeah, how many know the word of God is love letters to the body of Christ? so important. So we're going to go there and get ready to take some notes. And I want to make sure that I'm not missing. Don't forget as many people as you can get this out to. The play is going to be March 31st. They've worked long and they've worked hard over uh, this. And we don't want you to miss the opportunity to be a part of the play. I mean, no, not the play, but the, the, the celebration. Amen. Somebody. Uh, Resurrection Sunday. Everybody shout Resurrection Sunday. Turn to somebody and point to him like a prophet and say, be there or be square. The prophetic word is don't be square. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. So make sure you do it and make sure you bring a couple folks and a couple guests with you. Amen. Somebody here, we got, we got space. We'll make room for them. And then we got more chairs that we can pull in here. Amen, somebody. So we don't want you to miss the opportunity. And I'm believing God that even on that day, we'll win souls uh, for the kingdom of God. Amen. Somebody, is that good? Amen. Well, uh, are y'all ready for this today? Praise God. We got a, a few really good things for you. Uh, now, once again, I keep teaching these things that I haven't taught quite like I'm teaching them. And so you might hear some familiar scriptures, but uh, I want you to understand the way that I will go with this will be a bit different for you today. 
Is that all right, somebody? So I want you to be uh, in position and be ready for that. Amen. Glory to God. Boy, I feel the anointing up here, man. Glory to God. Somebody's been praying. Amen, somebody in here. Is that good? Praise God. Can we give the worship team a hand for just helping to set the atmosphere so that we can flow in the Holy Ghost and put out everything that God wants said today? Amen, somebody. If there's a visitor near you, can you just reach out, touch them, just touch them, just, just say we love you. I was going to say this is from Pastor Ron, but it's really from you. Amen, somebody. It's from Faith Life. And uh, just touch them with the love of God. Let's just welcome them, and they need to feel welcome. If you really hadn't seen them, I want you to touch them. Praise God. I, I'm, we're a church that I, I really believe should look and feel more and more like heaven. That's what you just sung, right? Amen, somebody. Amen. All right. So uh, we're going to get right into this. I'm trying to make sure that I didn't forget anything. No, no, we're good. All the announcements, good. I'm good on it. Okay. Glory to God. All right. Glory to God. Good, good, good. Uh, grab your Bibles real quick or your iPads or your iPhones or your Androids. Not quite a real, you know, person, but it's an Android. Amen. That's all right. It looks close. <laughs> I'm just messing with you. I love you so much. Amen. Somebody in here. And we're going to dig deep today, and I uh, hope you're ready to receive. Amen. Come on. And if you have leftovers, uh, take those. You're going to need those as well. Amen. Hold your Bible up high. Glory to God. Look around real quick. Look at all these swords, man. I believe we can take territory with all these swords, man. Look at this. Glory to God. You can take some places for God's glory. Amen, somebody. All right. Hold that Bible up real high and repeat after me. Come on. Say, this is my Bible. No, say it with some passion. Say, this is my Bible. Say, it is the voice of God to me. Come on, say, I am who it says I am. Say, I can have what it says I can have. Come on, say, I can do all that it says I can do. Come on, say, this morning I'll be taught the oracles of God. Come on, say, my ears are anointed to hear. Say, my mind is alert. Say, my heart is ready to receive. The indestructible, incorruptible, ever living word of God. Come on, say, I'll never be the same. Come on, be a prophet one more time. Turn to the person on your left and say, You'll never be the same. Come on, say, We'll never be the same again in Jesus' mighty name. All right, now give the Lord a shout like you believe that. Come on, clap your hands in the presence. Come on, clap your hands in the presence of the living God. Hallelujah. Come on, clap your hands in the presence of the living God. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, we're going to do one more prophetic thing, and then I'm going to have you, uh, we're going to go into the Word, and we're going to have you be seated, okay? Is that all right? Uh, I want you to find about four people, touch them real quick, and I want you to tell them something good is going to happen for you this morning. Okay, four to five people, real quick. Come on, leave where you are just for a second, and then you're going to come back, okay? Come on, say, I, I, I declare over you something good, something marvelous, something wonderful. Something good is going to happen for you this morning. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Something good is going to happen. Anytime the presence of the Lord is in the house, the Bible says where the Spirit of the Lord is, He says there is liberty, there is freedom. Come on, the chains are about to fall off in the midst of the teaching because, come on, something good is getting ready to happen for you this morning. Hallelujah. Yes, 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 yes. All right. Glory to God. All right. You can grab your Bibles real quick, and uh, let's just get a, something just kind of foundational. I'll say uh, just, just go to John chapter 10 and verse 10, and we'll start there. Glory to God. All right. Got to be able to see. Thank you. I was blind. Amen. All right. <laughs> 
You know what? I'm not going to have you stand. You can be seated if you can. Glory to God. Come on, give the Lord a shout. Hallelujah. All right, let's get right into this. All right. Got a unique title for this message. Uh, I, I, I was kind of waiting to preach this. This has kind of been waiting in the wings. So uh, just know that even as I share, it's aimed at nobody, but it's aimed at everybody. And, and you got to know this because this has been one of those teachings that's been in my repertoire. I've had it, uh, but just waiting on the Lord as to the timing uh, as to when to speak it. So if you know I've already had this kind of waiting in the wing, you know I'm not aiming at any specific person. Is that all right, somebody? Glory to God, I have to do that because sometimes people try to read in, and I don't want you to read in. I just want you to receive it for you. Is that all right, somebody? So uh, the title of this message, again, is unique. It is The Necessity of an Ending. Okay, the necessity of an ending. As I began to meditate on this thing of new beginnings, and uh, this has been our series on new beginnings, then this is probably going to be the conclusion. How many have enjoyed this thing on new beginnings? Amen, somebody. It's important that you come in uh, to 2024 with a new beginning, a new mindset. The Bible says he, uh, God can't pour new wine into Oh, oh, wineskins, it's, it's already been set up. It's already been uh, formulated. It's already been done. And so he says in a new year, he says, I'm giving you new wine, but you're going to have a new mindset. You're going to have to have a new mentality. You're going to have to renew your mind with the Word of God. How many know God needs us to be Word inside minded? That's important so that you don't react like you would react, but you will respond uh, according to the Spirit of God and the Word of God. Amen, somebody? And so we're going to talk into that a little bit, but, uh, you know, <laughs> I need you to be alert. Don't be distracted. Don't be distracted. Amen, somebody in here. Glory to God. Yeah, for those that need a moment just to take down a couple of scriptures, I want you to be able to follow along. That looks very unique. Did you flip that? Okay, I'm starting with Ecclesiastes. I guess we could, you know, uh, he, he did it, but, you know, just got to flip it just like that. So uh, Ecclesiastes is the beginning pillar. Amen. Hallelujah. We made our own Tower of Babel, right, with those scriptures. <laughs> somebody. All right, but the necessity of an ending. Turn to somebody and say the necessity of an ending. Turn back to them and say you need to end a thing before you begin something new. You need to end a thing before you begin something new. Turn to the person on the other side. Say, you need to end a thing first before you begin something new. Say amen, somebody in here. I mean, I know all of us have the, the, the tendency to hold on to things a little bit longer than we should. Anybody like me, I'm kind of a, a, a you know, the, how many saw those that show hoarders? Uh, I'm not as bad as them, but I'm kind of a private hoarder. You know, I just, I stack stuff. I remember I, I used to shop at Buckle and, uh, you know, True Religion and all this, and I had clothes stacking up in the corner that I wouldn't wear, but I just couldn't pass up the opportunity to get something that might not be here next week. Oh, uh, y'all here. <laughs> so I would stack, I would stack, I would stack. And one day, uh, my, my wife actually, I didn't know this, but she gave out a half of my wardrobe. And I never miss not a thing. Amen, somebody. How many understand that? That has to do with the fact that you're a closet hoarder. And there are some things that we hold on to that we need to let go of. Oh, say amen, somebody. That before there can be the new thing coming, God says, all right, you got the lesson from the old. Anybody ever talk to people who, whenever they talk to you, it's the same testimony about something that happened 10, 15 years ago? It's all right to, to, to talk to us about what God has done, but what is he doing? Say amen, somebody in here. We're excited that God got you out. We're excited that God got you off drugs. We're excited that God bless you with the new husband or the new wife. or All, all of that stuff is good. But how many of you know after a time that, that that's, that's the old victory? Now God has new victories. The Bible says, thanks be to God through Jesus, he always calls me to triumph. Oh, if you know what I'm saying, say amen. But endings are necessary. Write that down. Endings are just like you're saying, man, I'm ready for something new. I'm ready for a new beginning. How many know endings are necessary? 
Oh, I ain't getting enough amen. Somebody say amen in here. Endings are necessary. And let me go further. They are biblical, and they are definitely a part of life. Endings are necessary. They are biblical, and they are, they are definitely a part of life. Say amen, somebody. Now, there's always going to be a, a need for things to come to an end. Now, let me just toss out some examples that came to my mind. How many know there needs to be an ending of bad eating habits? I definitely needed that one. That was a prophetic word for me. Amen, because I, I will eat. I will eat anything you put out there. Give me some pepper or some hot sauce. Amen, somebody. <laughs> but I will eat any of it, praise God. Uh, but, but bad eating habits. Number two, toxic and unholy relationships. Toxic and unholy relationships. You know, sometimes it takes courage, but you're going to have to bring that to an end. Say amen. Am I talking to you this morning? Amen, somebody. Three, your ill treatment of other people because of your issues and what you're dealing with. And it seems like nobody cares because that's the song the devil's been playing in your mind. So you treat people the way that you're feeling. So your ill treatment of other people. How many know at Faith Life, we're people who walk in love. So whether you treat me right or not, we're going give to give it to you on credit. Say amen, somebody in here. Turn to somebody and say, walk in love, walk in love. Amen. Don't get the next person back for what somebody else did to you. Walk in love. I'm already preaching. Look at that. Uh, number four, uh, being broke and jobless. Being broke and jobless. Now, don't miss what I'm saying. I know some people are in transition. That's not what I'm talking about. The fact that you're out there fighting and beating the pavement and you are doing what you got to do to make some things happen, that's not what we're talking about. But I'm saying there comes a time that, you know, the Bible says if you don't work, you don't need to eat. In other words, I have, I have covered you. I have given you the grace. I've given you the power to get some things going. Amen, somebody, or to make some things happen. So I don't have to be broke. Why? Because God's given me seed. Now, some seed is bigger than others, but how many know that, that your, your seed prophesies your future? Say amen, somebody in here. Amen. Your days of being wordless or your days of being prayerless got to come to an end. Are y'all here? Come on, say amen if you're here. Yeah, your days of being wordless. You know, you're always seeking uh, people for advice when you should be giving out advice. The Bible says in another scripture, he says, by now you should be teachers. In other words, don't always be the man with the empty cup in his hand trying to receive something from somebody else. Be the man that's got the pitcher in his hand. Be the guy that's always pouring. Say amen, somebody. In other words, I always got a word. I always got something I need to really see you. I always got some counsel. Why? Because I'm always filling myself with the counsel of the Lord, the word of God. Say amen, somebody in here. Is this good? Amen, somebody. Your freeloading days. That needs to come to an end. And I remember being the guy that always patted my stuff. I knew we were going to some ma major restaurant and all of that. And I was like, oh, my, I, did I forget my wallet? Man, go ahead and get me this time. I mean, no, go ahead and get me this time. It's like the 12th time. And, and so <laughs> all I'm saying, when the Lord finally convicted me, it's like, I didn't call you to be a freeloader. I called you to be, come on, somebody in here. I called you to freely give. Don't be a freeloader, but freely give. Say amen, somebody in here. So your freeloading day, turn to somebody and say, is he talking to you? Is he talking to you? Amen, somebody. <laughs> and lastly, you're overstaying your welcome. Days like that, where you think people got forever to listen to your stuff. You've already shared what you're going through with eight people. And then somebody else that answers the phone, just happens to answer the phone, they've got to deal with another hour and a half of what you got to say. And all I'm saying is don't overstay your welcome, even when you go to people's house. Did you know it's a practice? Now, you don't have to do what I do, but my practice is to be the first one out. Amen, somebody. I won't overstay my welcome. Why? Because I want to come back to your house. Say amen, somebody. But if you're shutting it down, and I've been around people that, you know, I mean, they're at my house, but I'm doing this. And they are talking like I ain't even sleepy. Why? Because 
you don't know the difference. Don't overstay your welcome. I'm not talking about family before family gets mad. I'm talking about learning wisdom. Say amen, somebody in here. So new beginnings, write this down. New beginnings are often preceded by uh, a needful or necessary ending. New beginnings, new beginnings, they're often preceded. Before you can have a new beginning, you got to have a needful ending. You got to have an essential ending. You're going to have to shut some things down. Before you go to that next chapter in your life, you got to shut some things down before you go into this new thing. Otherwise, you're going to take that stuff and you're going to bring it into the new relationship. Say amen. Am I talking to you this morning? Amen, somebody. Um, let me go. John chapter 10, verse 10, if you can go there real quick. Is this good so far? Come on, give the Lord a hand clap if you got that. When it comes to an excessive amount of clothes, y'all know my example. That's one thing. Uh, I, you know, y'all remember my example. But when it comes to toxic relationships, toxic, toxic relationships, how many know that's different? And there has to be an ending in sight. Say amen. Somewhere there has to be an ending in sight. Why? So you can get back to being about your father's business. Amen, somebody? Is this ministering to you already? John chapter 10 and verse 10. Let's read it real quick. John chapter 10 and verse 10. Come on. Let's read it together. Three, two, one. Ready, read. He says, a thief, he doesn't even show up except to do what? The only reason the thief is showing up is he, the, the devil is first, he, he first steals and what? And he comes to kill and to destroy that connection, destroy that relationship, destroy those divine relationships that God set up for you. And he doesn't care how he gets it done. He just wants the detachment. Say amen, somebody. But he says, I have come that you do what? That you have life and that you'll have that life what? More abundantly. So God doesn't just want you uh, to be busy about the Father's business, but God wants you to enjoy doing it. That's not just Joyce Meyer saying. He wants you to enjoy everyday life. I mean, while you're winning souls, he wants you to enjoy everyday life. While you're headed to the bank, he wants you to enjoy every everyday life. While you're being disciples, say amen, somebody. While you're loving on people at the grocery store, he wants you to enjoy that life. Amen, somebody in here? Now, let me say this, and, and you can hear this. You know that you are getting healthy when you have an expectation of an expiration date. You know that you are becoming healthy or getting healthy when you have an expectation of an expiration date. What are you talking about, Pastor? How many are like me and, um, you know, sometimes things that probably should have been taken out of the refrigerator, you kind of leave in there for a while because everybody's too lazy to pour it completely out and get rid, get rid of it. So sometimes you'll set it near the back and you'll put the new stuff up front. Are y'all here? And the challenge with that is sometimes people don't know that this thing has expired five days ago or a week ago, and God help you if it's been a month ago. Isn't it amazing how <laughs> that is something that should have ended? You should have taken that out, and you should have dealt with that. But isn't it amazing how we keep it in there? Anyway, as long as it looks fine, I think we'll be all right. There is no need to take that thing out, open it, and sniff it to see if it's okay. When it has the date, the expiration date printed on it, that there is no need to check that out. Am I preaching already to you? Come on. There, there, there is no reason to do that. It is over. It's time to get something else. Amen, somebody in here. So it, there, there was an ending, but how many understand people hold it a lot of times way past the time of when they should have, uh, it should have been jettisoned. It should have been, it should have been taken out. Amen, somebody in here. Revelation chapter 22 and verse 13. Revelation chapter 22 and verse 13. Don't worry, I'm getting there. Revelation chapter 22 and verse 13. Uh, this is the New King James Version. This is Jesus talking. Come on, let's read it together. Three, two, one. New Revelation 22, verse 13. Let's read it together. Three, two, one. Ready, read. He says, I am what? Alpha. And I am. Amen. He says, I am the beginning and I am the end. And what? 
Just in case you missed it, I, I, he said he is the first and he is the, uh, so God is the alpha and he is the omega, right? He's the beginning and he's the end, right? He is the first and he's the last, right? So if I'm going to trust God on being my beginning or with my beginning, I'm going to know in 2024, I also have to trust him when he says it's time to end this relationship. It's time. You, you are not just my beginning, but you are the one that helps me end the thing. Say amen, somebody. Why? Because the Bible says this. It's important. He says, looking under Jesus, the, he is the author and he is the finisher of my faith. So did get the, the thing that you have to ask about that ministry or that business or that relationship, did God author it? Because if God authored it, if God began this, if God started this thing up, then he is faithful and just to take me all the way to the end and give me victory because I didn't do it on my own, but with God, all things are possible. Come on, somebody in here. He doesn't just, God doesn't begin a thing to walk away. God begins it and God brings things to an end. So if I'm going to trust him to start a thing, how many know I can also trust him in the ending? And when he says, this now actually has to come to a close, I can trust the one who is my first and last, the one who is my alpha and my omega, the one who is my beginning and the one who's going to bring it to an end. Say amen, somebody in here. Is that good, somebody? Come on. He, he, he did this with Adam and Eve, and I'm going to show you this. He did this, Genesis chapter 2. Uh, we're going to go 23 through 24. Uh, he did this with Adam and Eve. I don't know about you, but I've always looked at Genesis as the book of beginnings. I mean, it, like this is first law I mentioned. This is where everything began. This is the seed of all things. This is uh, Genesis, the book of beginnings. Everybody shout the book of beginnings. But as you really begin to search that out, you find out that included in the beginning, he did some endings. Like when he says, let there be light, or when he said, light be, is really what the little translation says. In other words, God saw darkness, he saw things were chaotic, and God didn't like what he was looking at. Now, on the inside of him, how many understand that he had a desire that was different than what he was looking at? You would think from the beginning of creation, what we see, we would actually be the same way. He said, you'll have what you say, not what you desire. He said, you'll have what you say. So it's important that you know what you want when you say what you say. Am I preaching to you this morning? He says, he will have whatsoever he, he says, if, if you not, won't doubt in your heart, but shall believe that those things which he prayeth or those things which he saith shall come to pass. He says, you will have whatsoever you, amen, somebody. So how many in 2024, you're careful about what you say? Let me help you about 2024. God's turning the power up a bit. That went right over your head, but I, I'm, I'm prophetically trying to help you. The Lord said the, the Lord's turning the power up just a, a bit, and so it's important that, you, that you're careful about your words. Do you really want to come to pass what you're saying about this relationship? Do you really want to come to pass what you're speaking about your church? Do you really want to come to pass what you're saying about the corporate office where you serve or where you work? Do you really want that to come to pass? Because if God turned the power up, how many know that thing could be coming up your driveway next week? Oh, are y'all here? Praise God. So I've always looked at the book of beginnings, but think about it when he said, let there be light, or he said, light be. How many know it was the beginning, and he created the sun and then uh, put the moon up there? How many understand it brought the end of one thing because he separated the darkness from the light? And it brought, how many can imagine a world where everything is always dark? Now, hell is like that, but you're not going. Somebody better shout in here. Many can imagine a world where things are always dark, it's always night, there's never no real light. Amen, somebody in here. Or how many can imagine a time where it's always light? Heaven is like that, but you'll be supernatural. But if it was this day and time, and there's no bedtime. There's no time to relax. Come on, Leon. There's no time to kick your feet up. Because it's always day. 
Thank God he bought an end to one thing. <laughs> and he bought, uh, are y'all here? And, the begin, and a new beginning to another thing. Say, so met somebody in here. So how many see that? There was, a, there, there was a new beginning, praise God, in creation, but in the midst of the beginning. Otherwise, God will be saying, uh, let there be a tree. Let there be a tree. Every single day, he'll have to do it over and over. But in the beginning, how many understand, he included in that tree um, uh, herb-bearing seed so that I can, it, more, more trees can be produced. So when this comes to a close or when this seed dies, you know, the Bible says, except a corner of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abides alone. But if it die, what happens? It's going to open up and it's going to bear much fruit. Amen, somebody. All right, Genesis chapter 2. Is this all right? Come on, give the Lord a hand clap if you got that. Genesis chapter 2. And we're going to go 23 through 24. Glory to God. Is this good stuff? Genesis chapter 2, 23 through 24. And this is the New King James Version. Genesis chapter 2, 23 through 24. When you got to say, I have it. Come on, let's read it together. Three, two, one. Ready, read. And Adam said, now, this chick right here. Oh, I'm sorry. That's not how your Bible reads. I'm sorry, Lord Jesus. Okay, this is now what? Bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called. Whoa, man. <laughs> okay. Uh, because what? She was taken out of the womb of a man, or she was taken out of man. Amen, somebody? Amen. So there is an, there is an ending here, but yet there's a beginning, right? If, if you see that. Now, let me go further. Verse 24. How many caught this in verse 24? Let's read it. Therefore shall a man do what? Leave father and mother. Now, who could God be talking to? Adam don't have no father and mother. He's setting a precedence. Say amen, somebody. Who, who's Adam's mom? Amen, somebody. <laughs> so I'm releasing something now, and it's going to set a precedence on what's to come. Remember first law mentioned? Say amen, somebody in here. He says, therefore, because remember, uh, the Lord God was the first, uh, help me, Jesus, wedding planner, event planner. He used the Garden of Eden, the, the, the nicest venue you could possibly have. And he brought two people together. Say amen, somebody in here. And, and did that supernaturally. Say amen. He said, therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and do what? So think about that. He's saying you got to leave, bring an ending in order to, to begin or to cleave. Therefore, he said, the man shall leave his father and his mother and be joined to his wife and the... The two shall become what? One flesh. Amen, somebody. So he says there's first got to be an ending. He says you can't go into this new thing. You can't go into this new covenant. You can't join this new church unless you make a proper ending of the old. This is why it's so important if you ever have to, have to. I know that day comes for some people that it's time for you to shift out of one place and go into another one. But don't leave a mess when you go. Because the same way you closed out a season is the way you'll begin one. If I leave a season with no honor, if I leave a season with no submission, if I leave a season shooting, shooting my guns, I'm guns a-blazing, and I'm, I'm, I'm out of here. But, and it was the same house that you said God set you up in. In fact, you testified to the church and to everybody around you that this is where God's call be to be. There is no doubt in my mind God did this. And so you're, you're, you're in one. And, and how many know it's the enemy's job to put pressure on your tongue? That's why even when you want to say it, you got to think about that. Say amen, somebody. And I'm not saying it's, what you're saying is not the truth. Sometimes what you're saying might be true. But you, gotta, you can't be dishonorable and expect God to honor you in your new season. Expect God to honor you, you in your new place. Expect God to honor you in the new corporate office uh, setup that you're going to. you got to end the thing the right way in order to step into the, to a new season the right way. You can't just blow it up and then expect God to back me at this other place. Am I preaching to you today? 
Yeah, yeah, give the Lord a hand clap. I'm trying to help you. Always get it right. Always it's worth it for you to take the time. Get it right first. Why? Because the way I end the thing. Why? Because that's how my heavenly father is. That's how Jesus was, even when he ended, when he, when he transitioned out. How many know uh, the Bible says even the napkins that cover him was folded? Jesus took time to make his bed up before he started something new. Amen, somebody. Some of y'all saying, what? Really? Is that in the Bible? It is in the Bible. Say amen, somebody in here. But he says, uh, again, I ha you have to end the thing. In other words, he's saying when he says, for this cause, shall a man leave father and mother, uh, he's talking about not only leaving father and mother, but he's leaving the father's house. They're leaving mama's house. Say amen, somebody in here and their systems, and their way of thinking, and their way of doing things, and the family culture. You do that first in order to be joined to somebody else. And he says, now that you've closed this out, you close this chapter, there are many lessons that you learn from that whole thing, and you can use those lessons, put it in your backpack, because it's going to be, help you be successful in the new place that God's taken you. Say amen, somebody. Is that good? Yeah, he says, do this. Get, don't worry about the system, those systems. Don't worry about that old way of thinking because he says, I'm taking you to something altogether new. But he says, before you can go into the new beginning, he says, there has to be a necessary ending. There has to be the needful ending. There's an essential ending that has to take place before you can go here. See, the reason why some marriages are struggling or some people in relationships are struggling is that you can't have a new beginning because there's never been a proper ending. Got to be, pro be a proper ending before you can step into the new. I love it when y'all get quiet like this. I had an old preacher tell me, you ain't preaching until they're looking at you like this. Amen, somebody. I love you, though. Say amen to somebody in here. Point number one. Write this down. Point number one. Is this good? Every new beginning is usually preceded by an essential ending. So end well. Every new beginning. Every new beginning. Every, everybody shout new beginning. Now, how many have started 2024 and you've already had a new beginning? How many are still waiting on that new beginning? I still feel like, Pastor, I'm in quicksand. I got to get out of this. Amen, somebody. Well, we're, gonna t we're telling you how to do it today. Is that all right, somebody in here? Praise God. So every new beginning, everybody shout new beginning. Every new beginning is usually preceded by an essential ending or a, a, a necessary ending. So in well, in well, if you're going to close something out, you need to end that well, end it the right way. Amen, somebody. Understand what the will of the Lord is for you and end that well so you can begin on the right foot. Amen, somebody here. Listen, the way I came into full-time ministry, I worked a regular nine-to-five like many of you. I mean, later we bumped up the supervisor and manager. We went through that whole thing. A lot of you guys know my story. But uh, there came a time where the ministry uh, stuff started pulling on me unusually. It was more than the norm. Amen, somebody. Finally, after God called me into the ministry, I was duly employed. I was working faithfully in the corporate office, and uh, I had my own pastoral office at uh, TGP, at the Gathering Place Worship Center. And uh, the Lord one day spoke to me about uh, making an, a, an essential ending or making a necessary end of the corporate office. And he says, you do that. He says, don't worry about it. You don't have to be bivocational anymore because you're a priest of mine. And he says, I will take care of you. Now, how many know on the strength of that word alone, uh, I had to put some things in order and get ready to just step out of the boat and go to Jesus? Is that all right? Now, here we are, what, 20-some-odd years since I did that? <laughs> Come on, how many know God is a keeper? God will take care of you. Amen, somebody. But it, it's, I came out of the corporate office and in the ministry with a promise that the Lord said that he will supply all of my needs. Now, don't know what that is in the Bible. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 19, just a reminder. 
that, that, that scripture is not just for Pastors Ron and Gina. Amen, somebody. How many know this scripture is for you too? Come on, let's read it. Three, two, one, ready, read. No, no, no. And my God, not just God, but he's my God. You ain't really been nowhere until he becomes my God. Oh, y'all ain't here. Come on, are, are, are y'all here? It's great that you go to church, but he, he's got to be my God. Oh, come on. It, it, it's great that you know a lot of sanctified saints, but he has to one day become my God. And when my God shall supply everything, all my needs, according to his riches and glory through and by, that's important. Say amen, somebody. That's why my wife's confession in mine every morning and every time we pray is all my needs are met. All bills are paid according to his riches and glory. Put the right things on your tongue, not how we going to pay all it. No, no, no. Uh, my God, my, my, my God, I'm not talking about yours. I'm talking about mine. All my needs are met. All my bills are paid. Well, you ain't even get the other bill yet. Yeah, that's all right. All my needs are met because he is the first and he is the... He is the beginning, and he is, uh, come on, somebody in here. Yes, yes, yes. So all my needs are met. All my bills are paid according to his riches and glory through and by Christ. Is that what your Bible says? Through and by Christ Jesus. Amen. But necessary endings are a part of life. You know, many people are always trying to get the 411 on. They, 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 they ain't together no more. Oh, how, how did that? Yeah, guys, you got too much to concentrate on with you. I don't have time for it. Are y'all here? How dare you start, you know, the busy party line and just start making calls? Come on, guys. We got too much to do for Jesus. I can always tell I'm touching you because my amens go to three. Say amen, somebody in here. It's all right to befriend somebody and try to console them for a second, but after that, you got to get back on the horse, man. We got too much to do for God in this hour. Say amen. And my, 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 my assignment from the Lord is not dependent on what's going on with you. Good preaching, Pastor Ron. Glory to God. I'm so glad I came to the house of the Lord. I needed to hear that. Thank you. <laughs> Is that good, somebody in here? Come on, if you won't hear from me, let's hear from Solomon again. I know we touched this, but I want to hear from you. Because the last time we did this, I did not recognize that included in the beginnings that he was talking about was also the necessary endings. Amen, somebody. Ecclesiastes chapter 3. Let's go real quick. We're going to do this fast. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, and we're going to go 1 through 8. Is this good? Somebody shout amen. Ecclesiastes chapter, I know you were just reading Ecclesiastes. Amen. You might have been up all night reading Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes 3, and we're going to go 1 through 8. Real quick, let, let's, let's read it. I'm, I'm going to say the first part, and then I'm going to say and, and you're going to give me the, the, the ending. Are you ready? All right. Let's read it. 3, 2, 1. Ready? Read. To everything there is a season, what? A time for every purpose under heaven. How many know you are born with a purpose? How many know you are hardwired to do something for God and his kingdom? Oh, come on. How many discover what, the, what a part of that, that, that whole thing is? How many got a vision for their life? Please don't go through 2024 as blind as a bat. But you need to know what your purpose is. Why does God have me where he has me? Why is the people that's linked to me right now, how come God connected us like he did? And then are they with me for a season, or is there a shelf life to this relationship? Come on, you don't always have to open the cap and, and sniff. To so everything, there is a season and a time for every purpose under, come on, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and... All right, a time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and going to be a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to, a time to mourn and a time to dance. Anybody did that other part? You start dancing? Did he ever turn your mourning into dancing? 
Come on, am I talking to anybody that knows Jesus like I know Jesus? Say amen. Sometimes when you don't, can't figure it out, it's just time to get up and rejoice and just bless them, man. Glory to God, I don't have no answer for what's going on. So maybe, maybe, maybe he wants me to dance. Amen, somebody. A time to cast away stones and a time uh, to embrace and, amen, somebody. A time to gain and a time to keep and time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to do what? A time to keep silent. I have to pause on that every time. Why? Because some people's relationships will be saved and some connections will not be uh, undermined if you knew when to just shut up. Just shut up. It's okay. They ain't listening to you. <laughs> I mean, they can tell when they ain't listening to me. But why does Ray, and I'm guilty. Why does raising your voice, you think they're going to hear you now? You don't hear what I'm saying. So you think that that's going to be received better? Okay. I'm trying to help us. Amen, somebody in here. He says there's a time to speak, but there's also a time to keep silent. There's a few reasons for that. Why? Because sometimes you got to wait for an opening for you to say it. Sometimes this ain't even the time to bring your part. Maybe it's your time to hear. Maybe it's your time to listen. Maybe the Holy Spirit can speak to you in times of silence. You didn't catch that, did you? He, he, he leadeth me beside the... wonder why. <gasps> wonder why still waters rather than raging seas. He leads me beside the still waters because everything's brought to a calm and it's so much easier to hear from God. I don't know about you, it's tough for me to hear from God sometimes, even though I hear from the Lord like nobody's business, but it's tough for me to hear when my house is dirty. Dishes pile up in the sink, stuff on the floor. I could tell what happened the other night. Look at this room. <laughs> but, but all I'm saying is, clean it up, get rid of the clutter so you can hear. Am I talking to you today? Say amen, somebody. So he said, the time to keep silent and... Time to speak. Last one. A time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time <laughs> for peace. Amen, somebody. Is that all right? Amen, somebody. Let me keep reading. Listen, uh, sometimes it's not the relationship. So I'm leaving one phase of what I'm teaching, and I want you to hear this part. Sometimes it's not the relationship that needs to end, but it's the behavior of the people that are in that relationship that needs to have a necessary ending. Sometimes you don't throw everything away. The baby with the bathwater, yeah, all this needs to go because it's so easy to jet. It's so easy to walk away. Now, again, I got to pause and say, this is not about some recent incident. Please don't get lost. This has been in my repertoire. Okay? All right. Let's just want to clear that up. But, but sometimes it is not... You know, throwing the whole thing away, sometimes it is the behavior in that relationship. God says the relationship, it's easier to walk away from it. It's easier to run away. It's easier to just take off. But there are some things that he says your behavior is what's causing problems in this relationship. And he says, because, he says that is what needs to be brought to a close. He's saying that there don't need to be an ending of the whole thing. No, no, no. He's saying your behavior. You can only throw tantrums so long. How come you 30 and 40 and 50 throwing tantrums? Are oh, y'all with me? You know why you throw tantrums? Because it works for you. And there is no growth there, but you know it works. So you know if you pout. You know, if you do the tantrum thing, you know, if you yell and scream, uh, that wife or that husband don't want to deal with it. 
And because they don't want to deal with it, what do they do? You know what? Whatever it is, man, just go on and get it. I don't know. Why, why, okay. Did you know that you're, you're hindering growth opportunity? Thank you, Pastor Ron. Oh, my God. You're telling me about myself. Now, thank you, sir. Amen. God, I don't even hear an amen. Y'all saying other stuff. Because the amen means that's the truth, so be it. <laughs> and for you to amen, that means something got to change with you. Because you know your husband watching you right now. Amen. Is that all right? <laughs> but again, I say sometimes it's not, it's not the friendship. Some people, 86 friends. And I, I, I was notorious for just ending friendships. I was. And then you find out that there's a time, there was a bridge that God created, but you blew up the bridge. There was a way out of this situation, but you blew it up. You, you, you didn't see any value in, in, in that person being present all the time. So you didn't really care. You said, what are they doing for me? What have you done for me lately? And, and, and what happened? You blew it up because you didn't see the value in it. And when you blew it up, how many know, uh, then when the onslaught happened, now you needed to pull on somebody and nobody's there to do it. Why? Because you murdered all your friendships. Man, I love my pastor. Amen, somebody. And I am saying to you, necessary endings, this is point number two, sometimes need to happen in the behavior within a relationship. Necessary endings sometimes needs to happen in the behavior within a relationship. Am I preaching to you today, somebody? In other words, sometimes I have to make some personal changes. Everybody say personal changes in my behavior before God can actually use me as a change agent to the body. In other words, he says, you have to personally change some things. I see some things with you first. It's like people who, are like I do, operate in the prophetic. Did you know first, before you operate in the prophetic, he turns that prophetic spirit on you? So it deals with you first. And you got to submit yourself to what God's, God is doing. Now you can be free to be used by God to touch others. Say amen, somebody in here. I said before, it's much easier to end a relationship, so it seems, than it is to end the behavior that is causing the problems and the toxicity within the relationship. And more often than not, we would rather in a relationship rather than allow the Holy Spirit to come in and set up his construction site in my life and do a work in me. Why? Why are you saying that? Because when God is done, you can now have a new person in a relationship and real change can show up in this disconnection or in this relationship or in this marriage. Real change can show up now rather than a temporary fix. Because if you don't get this together, it's going to follow you into the next one. Say amen, somebody. No, I need a hand on that. That's good. Give the Lord a hand clap. The challenge is with that, precious people, is that it takes work. That's the part people don't want to do. In a microwave society, we want stuff now. You can get a date now. You can go online now. You can use social media now. I don't have to wait for you. What, you making me wait on this? I don't have to wait. I can just type up a couple things, and I'll have somebody at my door. Why? Be because you're in an instantaneous, you're, I mean, they know, immediately you can, I like to say immediately as suddenly as twin brother. Immediately you can have that thing that you've been after. But is it the will of God for you? Because people just don't like to work it. They don't like to work it. It, it, it. <laughs> It takes work and real trusting the God of the process. Is this good? I'm talking about the necessary ending of avoiding issues. Write that one down. I'm talking about the necessary ending of avoiding issues. Some of y'all got issues. And the Bible says out of the heart are the issues of life which means pretty much every one of us in here has something going on that, that the Lord is waiting to help men or to help take care of. 
But he's saying, now, the Holy Spirit is a gentleman. I'm not going to take that from you. This is something you got to get. He says, cast all those cares. What about my doctor bill? Cast those cares upon the Lord. Jesus, you got mail. Cast all those cares <laughs> upon the Lord, and he will. Yeah, he's going to care for you. Say amen, somebody in here. Is that good? Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 12. Man, I'm glad I came to the house. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 12. This is the New King James Version. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 12. You got to remember this. Your pastor is not your problem. The elders are not your problem. The way they graze you, bump your own. Anytime you had a bunch of people in one spot, how many know you're going to have some people issues? Maybe not a lot because y'all are mature. But how many understand sooner or later, lively stones are going to rub each other? And we didn't plan to do this, but we're on the same project or we're both in the, uh, you know, in the cafe or we're both in the events department, and sometimes you're going to rub against somebody. And it is okay. It's okay. He told you how to deal with that. But he says, just remember that lady or that man is not your problem. There's somebody back in this. There's somebody behind this that's pulling the strings. So that person is, I, I just helped somebody out. Say amen, somebody in here. Say amen, somebody. Sally is not your problem. Naomi is not your problem. Hopefully nobody's name either of those. Oh, my God, that's a prophetic word. <laughs> no, no, no. Are, are you following what I'm saying? They are not your problem. <laughs> but he says that's not even who you're wrestling. You're not wrestling. He says, Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 12, is this good? Come on, let's read it together fact, quickly. This is the New King James Version. He says, for we, we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. So people, he says, you're not fighting people. So when you go home and you're having dinner, you're not also having Sally for dinner. And I don't mean Sally is there eating with you. I mean you don't get there talking about Sally during dinner time because she was never my problem to begin with. He says, for we do, we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against what? Principalities, against powers, against what? Rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. I don't want a necessary ending to just avoiding issues. But write this down. I want an essential ending or a necessary ending to fighting unfairly. We're talking to the men and the women. Come on, y'all. Fighting unfairly and then fighting the person rather than attacking the issue. Say, man, you don't feel loved today, so you're going to lash out. No, be honest. And then give out what you want to an extent. Let me stop that one. <laughs> I was just saying, give out what? No, no, no. no. You know, give out what, what you're wanting to a certain extent. Say amen, somebody in here. You want to be loved, then love. You want friendships, then the Bible says he that has friends must do what? You got to first show yourself friendly and not always the same circle. The reason some people haven't grown because they always go back to the same group. And sadly, the moment somebody gets offended, they find that group out there. When there's a whole new group that will instruct you in righteousness, there's righteous men of God, righteous women of God, that's ready to pour into you, ready to sharpen you and say, that's not even how you need to see it. Here's what God is actually saying. Thank you, somebody. Is this good stuff? So an essential ending to fighting unfair, an essential ending to fighting the person rather than attacking the issues, saying things like, you always, you always are, you never. Look at me. Never use always or never. Never use it. Because so many times you're, you're bringing something out that it's going to be tough to change. If I have a propensity toward a certain thing, you, you, you always, okay, I, I, I hear you. But don't always use that. Am I helping you today? Turn to somebody, don't say nothing, just do this. Yeah, the, don't, don't keep using it. You are. You always do this. You always say this. So here's the challenge with saying that. Let me help you. On a regular basis, even when they have made changes, you won't see it. 
Because all they have to do is a month and a half later stumble a bit and mess up and do that again. Though they've gotten it again over the last six months, you didn't see that because you're waiting for the opportunity to point out something else. But yeah, you always do that. My God, you haven't been watching me? Brother been working hard, man. <laughs> Are y'all here? Is this good stuff? Let me help you. Matthew chapter 18. Is this good? Matthew 18, we're going to go 18 through 20. Man, I might get to tape myself. I love this, Pastor. My God, you're giving me a lot of meat here. Matthew chapter 18, 18 through 20. New King James Version. What are we doing? We're going past just being religious. The word religion is back to bondage. That's what it actually means. And let me help somebody out. I don't even know. I'm going to test it. Church is not whack. Church is not whack. Our systems are not whack. And wherever you want to go with it, we are not whack. You better be careful saying, sir, I don't care who you are. Why? Because church is God's idea. I'll say that again. You better be careful saying the things you say because church is God's idea. I don't care what talk show or what, what you get on or what forum or what platform. It doesn't matter. See, that, that's the challenge. We think so much about us and how we see it, but God opened up a platform for us to lift him up. Lift it. Well, it, it, it's what God sees. So you're talking about how you see a thing, and that's not even why God opened that platform up for you. You know what the world's going to do. You know they're going to coax you, and you know they're going to push this, and you know they're going to do that. Why? They get you to say something that justifies their position on it. But the whole deal, when God opens up a platform, it's for you to lift him up. He said, if, he said when you get on that platform, if I be lifted up on that same platform, what's going to happen? I am going to. I'm going to draw all men to myself. And let me help you. There are some things about church that need to be scrutinized. I get that. There are some things with church that ain't perfect. I get that. I messed up at times where I had to go to people and say, you know what? I know how that came out, but I am so sorry about it. But let me help us. Church is God's idea. And the Lord will defend his church. And the only reason I have to touch that is because of all the things that are being said, and it's getting easier and easier for some people to, to override the conviction of the Holy Spirit and just say what's on their mind, their carnal, fleshly mind. Say amen or say ouch in here. Pastor, I love you so much, man. Matthew chapter 18 and 18. Thank you, sir. Matthew chapter 18, 18 through 20. I'm getting there. Is this all right? Matthew 18, 18 through 20. How much time do I have? Ugh, okay. Let's read it. Three, two, one. Ready, read. He said, Assuredly, I say to you that whatsoever you bind on earth is what's already been bound where? In heaven. And whatsoever you loose on earth is what's already been loose where? In heaven. Now, let me help us with this. We, we, why is it so hot up here? Is there? Okay, I feel like a corn dog. Just <laughs> no, no, but, but, but here, here's the deal. L listen, H here's the challenge with, with that. Most of us will pull that scripture out, but we don't read a few scriptures up. So you can't just pull that out and say, he said, whatever I bind on earth is going to be bound. No, no, that's, that's, that's not all of it. If you go up a few verses, you find out that he's talking about humility, confrontation. He's talking about forgiveness, repentance. And he said, if you, can make, if, if you can get that right between each other, he says, now whatever you bind on earth, he said, Oh, bind in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth is what's already been loosed in heaven. I receive. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't know where you go. <laughs> anyway, are y'all here? And then we say, uh, where two on earth shall agree as touching anything. But isn't it amazing how we just pull that out? Are y'all here? How we just pull out two on earth shall agree. Touching anything that they'll ask in my name. 
Are you there? Thank you, sir. I feel it. Glory to God. That's better than if you sold something. I needed that. Glory to God. There you go. <laughs> Are y'all here? Uh, but but you see how much when that is preached, people just lift that scripture out. He said, well, two on earth shall agree is touching. No, no, no. He says, take care of the person-to-person issues. He says, don't let that live because as long as that's in tow, then the enemy has a place that he can have a foothold. But he says, I've empowered you to work certain things out. And if you work that out with the grace that I've given you, he said, when you work that out, he says, now, Jesus didn't say, I'll do it. He said, the Father will get off the throne. Now, whatever you bind on earth, says, and he says, the Father will get involved and he will say, what two on earth shall agree, and such and anything, that they'll ask the Father in my name. He says, he will. He'll make it happen. Somebody give the Lord a hand clap if you got this. If this good, did we read it all? Somebody needs some proof. I'll read it real quick. Let's read it together. New King James Version, 3, 2, 1, ready, read. He says, assuredly, I say to you, what? Whatever you bind on earth is what's already been. Bound in heaven and whatever you loose on earth is what's already been. Verse 19, again, I say to you that if two of you shall agree on, t- on earth concerning what? Anything that they shall ask, it will be done for them by whom? My Father in heaven. Verse 20, for where two or three are gathered together in my name or in my authority, he says, I am, I'm right there in the midst of you. And I said, notice later when you get time, go go up and read a few verses and you'll get that, that he was talking about repentance, forgiveness, confrontation, and humility. God says, work that stuff out, and he says that I've empowered you to do, and I will make sure that the blessing comes to you. There has to be a necessary ending to gaslighting. Write that down. Necessary ending. Talking about the necessity of an ending. There is a necessity of an ending to gaslighting. There's a necessary ending to not owning where you were the problem in the relationship. I watch people when they talk and when they talk of issues. And I wait to hear them take responsibility for their part. Here's what she's not doing. Here's what she don't do. Here's what, okay, I I, I hear you. I'm waiting for something, though. Here's what he never does. Here's what he don't do for me. Here's the, I, I hear you, but I'm waiting to hear your part. Then we're closer to a fair assessment. Takes two to dance. Oh, say amen, somebody. A necessary, there has to be a necessary ending to narcissism. Say amen, somebody. Some of you had the thought process when you got a relationship with the pastor or a relationship with that person or uh, 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 that they were placed there to serve you. Y'all getting quiet in here. Rather than you becoming the biggest server ever or the biggest giver or the greatest forgiver in that relationship. Amen. Are y'all still here or do I need to quit? I only have 10 more minutes. Are y'all good? Matthew chapter 23, and we're going to 11 through 12. He said the greatest among you is going to be, he's the one that uh, will be your servant, right? But those who exalt themselves, you don't get it right in that scenario. He says you will be humble. There's coming a day you will be humble, and those who humble themselves, you know, in the midst of that stuff, God says, I'll, be, I'll make sure that you're exalted. Say amen, somebody. Remember, any good relationship or friendship or any good marriage relationship are, are, are two people who are fighting to serve the other one better. You want a friendship that stands the test of time? Make it your business to serve that other one better than they serve you. Let's see if we can outserve each other. Somebody say amen. But, but how many know, as far as how we feel, it, it's, it goes contrary to how we feel. Why? Because we, we always feel like we need justification. Say amen, somebody. Turn to somebody and say, that takes work. Turn to somebody on the other side and say, that takes work. Turn to somebody behind you and say, that's going to take work. 
Loving God through serving one another is not always a walk in the park. It takes work, but faith will work if you work it. Amen, somebody in here. Is that good? Now, I may not have time. Yeah, thank you. Look at that. Give the Lord a hand. Yeah. Come on, help him, Robin. <laughs> Amen. Exodus chapter 14, uh, 13 through 31. I know I don't have time to read this, so that'll be your homework. Just to, uh, We're going to find out what Pastor was talking about. Exodus 14, 30, 13 through 31. It reminds me of the children of Israel. How many remember the story of the children of Israel? Where the children of Israel, if you remember the story, they were in a toxic relationship with Egypt, right? You know, I would call slavery a toxic relationship. Yeah, amen, somebody. So, so they were in real bondage. Say amen, somebody. And God came in and supernaturally set them free. I mean, anytime you split water. <laughs> I mean, he opened up the Red Sea uh, by his power for them to be guaranteed the victory. Come on, if you read the story, say amen. And here they are set free from a very dysfunctional abuse in that relationship. But here's the thing. While they are looking at, look, look at me, while they're in route <laughs> on their way to the promise, they are in route and don't go by the Charlton Heston movie, guys. Number one, one, Moses wasn't quite that color. But then number two, there was no old and feeble. How many saw the people on carts getting taken? through The, the Bible says there were none sick, no feeble one among them. You should read the Bible. It's a good book. You really should. Say amen, somebody in here. He says there was not. So that means everybody, even 80 years old, 90, we are, we are going across. And you know what was a miracle of God, especially for Iran homes? Their clothes grew with them. Do you know how much money I would say? No, no, no. Their clothes grew with them over the years. God supernaturally took care of them, even in the area of their clothes. Say amen, somebody. But on their way, while they were en route, while they were en route to the promise, they, they did what many of us would do. What did they do, Pastor? Wasn't it better back where we came from? Wasn't it a little bit better than this that we're going through? You know why they were that way? It's called fear of the unknown. They didn't fully know where Moses was taking them. And because of that, we might get beat a little bit, but we do have three squares a day. And so the very thing that God uh, really bought you out of, you got nostalgic and you begin to, you know, kind of long for the thing that God bought you out of. God set you free. How many excited that you are free from the thing that God got you out of? Let me ask you some personal questions real quick. Um, how many had BFF since kindergarten and you are still close to that person today? Three of you. Praise God. How many? <laughs> the first person you ever dated in your life, they are your wife or husband right now. How many are so grateful to God and will issue out a praise break that you are not stuck with the person you dated at the first time you ever? <laughs> Because that girl was crazy. No, no, no. You, you, you understand what I'm saying? I am so glad. You don't know who she was in the hood, Pastor. I found out the hard way. <laughs> I am so grateful to God that I got a necessary ending so that I can have a new beginning. Y'all better help me up in here. <laughs> Are y'all grateful? But how many are glad, Lord, thank you, that there was a glimmer of light and a glimmer of hope, and I took that way, <laughs> and I am no longer stuck. Amen, somebody in here. I know I got to, I'm having too much fun. I know I got to quit. Five minutes and we're out of here. Amen, somebody. Is that all right? So I remember that, and, and, and so um, I, I remember because of the fear of the unknown, uh, how many know many f fell in the wilderness, for those that remember the story? Amen, somebody. And 
they didn't know where Moses was leading, but as he did this, as Moses led them, I mean, you know, God took care of them in the wilderness. God, by his spirit, took care of them in the wilderness. And one of the ways he took care of them was manna. Everybody say manna. Turn to somebody and say manna, manna. In other words, Panera bread just kept falling from the sky. Panera bread just kept coming down. Every time they got up, my God, I don't have to pay for it. My God, that Danish, I don't got to pay for it. It's out here for me. All, already set up. Say amen, somebody. <laughs> And literally, he did this for 40 years. Can you imagine faithfully 40 years of doing that, and all they had to do was rake it in, grab it, uh, bring it to the house, and it sustained them for all that time. Until one day, after the 40 years of an ongoing miracle, we're going to go here, and I may have to stop here, Joshua chapter 5, one more, Joshua 5, 11 through 12. Joshua chapter 5, 11 through 12. Let me do this. When you got to say, I have it, this is the NLT. I'm going to read it real quick. He says, the very next day after the Passover, they began to eat unleavened bread and roasted grain, harvested from the land. Verse 12, the manna ceased. In other words, no manna appeared on the day, on that day of, of, of that year. And for the first time, they ate from the crops of the land. And it was never seen again. So from that time on, the Israelites ate from the crops of Canaan. Listen, 40 years. 40 years, all you had to do was take the bread and break it in. 40 years, all you had to do was pull it in and eat it. God didn't even make an announcement. Hey, gang, you might want to pull in double this time because tomorrow everything's about to change. You won't have manna or freebies anymore. Say amen, somebody in here. Why didn't he want them, Pastor? Because he needed a necessary ending. Is that good? Why are you saying this, Pastor? Write this down and take it prophetically because you're about to leave the wilderness, wilderness and step into the promise. Say that again. You're about to leave the wilderness. How many can get this? How many can get it in your spirit? How many can see this? You're about to leave the wilderness, and you're about to step into the promise. I'll say it one more time. Why was it important for God to end this? Because they were about to leave the, the, the wilderness, and they're about to step into the promise. Come on, lift your hands. How many are ready to step into the promise? In order for you to step into the promise, there, has to be a, there had to be a, 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 the necessity of an ending of just taking in bread. I love this. I love this. Listen. He's saying, you're not going to get the freebies, but you have to go on now and you have to work. You have to cultivate the land. Yes, I gave it to you, but you got to cultivate the land. Listen, we want the blessing without the understanding. Ah, write that down. We want the blessing. I can preach right here. We want the blessing without the understanding. We want the perks, but not the work. We want to be in lights, but we don't want to pay the price. You want the peace, but you don't want the elbow grease. Remember, faith without works is, and it's going to cost you. Say amen, somebody. We want the grace, but you don't want to seek his face. In prayer, that's important. Say amen, somebody. He says, guys, you want the blessing of the Lord without understanding the work that it's going to take to cultivate the land that I'm giving you. Listen, many of us, we quote that scripture, and we want houses that we didn't build, not knowing that you're going to have to pay property taxes on the house that was given to you. But God say he give me houses and lands. Okay, but you're going to pay property taxes on that too. Say amen, somebody. <laughs> I wish I could give the revelation, but I, I think this is important, that every good relationship takes work. Say amen, somebody. If you don't want to work, don't be in a relationship. We got men dying to be in a relationship. We got women dying to be in a relationship. But listen, you've had it easy. Now, with somebody next to you, you're going to work all the time. There's going to be times that you ain't up for it. There's going to be times I'd rather rest out this day to day. There'll be times I'd rather kick my feet up. Go cook you what now? Y'all better help me up in here. 
I want to go to the movies. Okay, go. <laughs> no, but, but, but you understand what I'm saying. We don't understand. Now you're going to be a servant of servants. Turn to somebody and say, it's going to take work. It's going to take work. It's not just going to fall from the sky. It's going to take work. Say amen, somebody. You're going to have to cultivate it. Say amen, somebody. If you're talking about that kind of relationship, you're going to have to tend it. Say amen. You're going to have to watch some things. You're going to have to invest in it. Say amen, somebody. You're, you're going to need to plant some things. You're going to water some things. You're going to have to pull up some things. Then you're going to have to protect some things. There's going to be some things I want to talk about, but I can't. Because I know who I'm dealing with, with you in here. <laughs> Faith without works is... Oh, I love it. It takes courage. Now, I can take you all through the Bible, but I know I'm wrapping up right now of, of essential endings that had to happen. How many can think right now of things that needed to come to a close before God can do what he wanted to do? Oh, say amen, somebody in here. So I, we could go there. But because, listen, third, third point, write this down. I made it to the third point. Somebody give the Lord. May not get done, but I made it to the third point. It takes courage to face the giants in our lives that have stood in the way of our purpose for years. It takes courage, courage, courage. Wizard of Oz, courage. It takes courage to face the giants in our lives that have stood in our, our way, uh, in the way of our purpose for years. God gave Abraham a word. How many remember that? I'll just use this example and close out. God gave Abraham a word. How many remember that? Let's do it again. God gave Abraham a word. How many remember that? That he should step out on faith and just go and trust him. And Abraham goes, but he bought somebody that he shouldn't have bought with him. How many remember that story? He bought his big-headed nephew, Lot, along with him. Read it again. It's in the Bible. When, when you get, he says, and again, this is Genesis 13, 1 through 15. Uh, when you get to the house, you can go there. Here's Lot with his uncle Abe, Abraham, finding himself getting in fights. Wait a minute. Abraham's the one with the blessing. Family conflict is underway. Anybody ever dealt with family conflict where you hate that you're in this, but there's no way out of this. We're going to have to work this out. Oh, say amen, somebody in here. And the land, listen, there was family conflict, but the land could not sustain them. And Abraham, look at me, because of somebody he loved. Ankh had to come in, and Ankh had to take courage so he could bring this one to a close. He said, nephew, he said, what? Yeah, yeah, Ankh, we got to. We, we, we need some closure, man. We got we to gotta bring this to a close. Did you know it, have, it was hurting him? It killed him to have to do that. Write this down. This might be my last point here. Sometimes you have to let go of what's killing you, even if it kills you to let it go. Sometimes you have to let go of what's killing you, even if it kills you to let it go. It was after that statement was made that the Bible says after he had separated from Lot. Now God said, you finally got the ending right. Now it's time to give you the new beginning. Did y'all get anything out of this today? Oh, you can do better than that. Come on. Come on. Did y'all get anything out of this today? That'd be good if it was for me. Come on, give the Lord, Lord Jesus a real hand clap. Come on, you can do better than that. Come on, you can do better than that. Come on. I want you to think about something as we prepare for our offering. What promise are you, have you still not stepped into? Because it takes courage to have a necessary ending. What promise does God have on the back burner for you? I mean, he's waiting for you to get this. But it takes a necessary ending. He's got to bring closure to the one thing 
so that you could step into this new thing. Amen, somebody. Turn to somebody and say, pray on that one, please. Pray on that one, please. Pray about that one. Don't just come to church and then not make changes. But I, I bought this to you because it's what God wanted to bring to you, that there's some things that need closure first before you step into the fullness of what we call a new beginning. One more time, give the Lord Jesus a real hand clap, somebody in here. Come on, give the Lord Jesus a real hand clap in here. Hallelujah, you can do better than that. Give it up for Jesus, somebody. I'm ready to give in the house of the Lord. No, no, come on. I, I feel this side, all the energy, all the faith, all the stuff. What about this side? I've been ready to give in the house of the Lord. Come on, we're going to bring the Lord's tithe and then everything above and beyond the tithe, which is that offering that He's directing, that, that, that seed that He said to you. Sometimes we give the same thing every Sunday, but I want you to, to listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. What is He saying He wants you to sow? That's when it really becomes seed. Now, remember, we have four ways to give. You can give in person, right? Does everybody say in person? You can give online. You can uh, text to give, or you can use the giving app. Amen, somebody. You can go to our new website, if you haven't been there, faithlife.tv, and then go to the giving part, and you can make it happen right there. But by all means, with this type of word, you need to make the exchange. Amen, somebody in here? Turn to somebody and say, make sure you make the exchange. Bringing the Lord the tithe, but we're also going to give seed because our seed prophesies our future. Here's what the Bible says. He who sows sparingly shall reap also what? And he who sows bountifully shall also reap. He says, every man as he's purpose in his heart, so let him or her give. Not, not grudgingly, nor of necessity. Why? Because God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make what? All grace. Turn to somebody and say, all grace. Push them real quick. Say, all grace. God is able to make all grace abound towards you that you will always have all sufficiency for all things that you'll be able to abound. Hallelujah. To every good and every charitable work. Listen, proof positive that you believe that you got the, the harvest. I talked this before, but I want somebody to get it. Faith is a smile. Faith is a rejoicing. In other words, he said, I'll have this when the exchange is made. Oh, say amen, somebody. He said, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these, the harvests, all these things shall be added unto you. Amen. Ushers, you can go ahead and serve the people. Here's what I believe. The quicker we get seed in the ground, the quicker we get a harvest. Come on. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Come on. Hallelujah. Come on. I'll praise when I'm sure. I'll praise when I'm down. for the opportunity to give. Will you stretch your hands out toward this offering while we pray for it? God, we thank you for the opportunity to give. We thank you, God, that your word says give, and it shall be given unto us. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, will you cause men to give under our bosom. So we thank you, God, that we are financiers of the kingdom. We thank you that we have seed in the ground, and the harvest is sure. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Whew. What a word. What a word. Amen. 
Amen. I'm so excited that we are at a church where we are well fed. And you know, the word of God is good. It comes, it packs a punch, it comes with meat. But we are taught at Faith Life that it's the applied word of God. It is the application that makes the difference. And so while I was sitting listening to Pastor Close, I just thought whether you're in the house or online, this is a great time to apply the word. In order to have a new beginning, you sometimes have to have a necessary ending. A necessary ending could look like ending a life that is just about the world and stepping into a life that is about the things of God. And so we want to not take for granted that anyone watching or in the house doesn't need an opportunity now to have a necessary ending in order to have a new beginning to both give their lives to Christ, but also rededicate their life to Christ if needed. And so we're going to take this opportunity and, and see it as the moment that it is. And we're just going to pray. You can repeat after me. If this is your first time online, you can repeat as well. And so we're going to say the prayer of salvation and rededication. And then at the end, we'll give you some instructions about that. Amen. So you can repeat after me, dear God. Dear God we thank you, we thank you for, the for the opportunity to have a new beginning. To have a new beginning. We thank you. That you sent your son, you sent your son Jesus, Christ. Jesus Christ. He died for our sins. He, died for our sins. he, rose, from he rose from the dead. And he is now sitting beside you, and now he's sitting beside you pleading, for us. pleading for us. And we get to be, and we get to be children, of God, children of God, joint heirs with Jesus. Joint heirs with Jesus. So, today, so today, I accept you into my heart, I accept you into my heart or I rededicate my life to you. Dedicate my life to you. And I accept this new beginning. And I accept this new beginning. All things have passed away. All things have passed away. And behold, everything is now new. And behold, everything is now new. I am a new thing. I am a new thing. And I perceive it. And I perceive it. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Sometimes it's not just the, the outside new things. You got to see yourself as a new thing. You got to perceive it and believe that God has done a new work in you and you are that new work, a finished work. And so if this was your first time saying that prayer in the house, we have our intercessory team that you will see come up at the end of service. Please come and let us know so that we can welcome you into the family of God, but also give you some tools. If this is your first time saying that prayer online, whether it's your first time saying the prayer in the house or online, or you're rededicating your life, let us know. We want to get some tools to you. We want to make sure that you have what you need to walk out your faith. Amen. Amen. All right. We have had an amazing time in God. And in case you don't know, the fun is not over. There might be a little surprise or something when you walk out today. So make sure that you linger and you love on your faith family. Amen. I'll close this out in prayer. God, we thank you again for this service. We thank you, God, that you have done a finished work. We thank you, God, for every necessary ending and every new beginning. We praise you, God, that we have joy and we believe that what you have done today, we will get to walk out and share with others. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. See you in life groups on Tuesday. <laughs> see you in life groups. Now all thoughts of fear I will turn into praise. Shake off despair as I sing out your name. A victory dance, I will dance out in faith. We'll crush disappointment and break every chain. Now all thoughts of fear I will turn.